Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is finally Android 11 day. Uh, Google took the covers off of Android 11. It is official. It is finally available in final form. And of course, we have had it running in beta form and early access as far as Pixel devices. But now we're starting to see other companies starting to recruit for Android 11, namely Xiaomi, Oppo, and of course, Huawei. Uh, so let's not waste any time. Let me share with you guys my top 10 favorite features of Android 11. And let's talk about those beta programs that are starting up for Android 11 from the other OEMs. This is TK. Let's dive in. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So what we have in front of us is a certain number of devices that are either a starting the beta program or have had some type of a, a release that's available right now. The Mi 10 on the left here from Xiaomi, as well as the X2 Pro and the Huawei P40 Pro, uh, from what I understand, at least from an article that was posted over on the XDA portal, they're, all three companies are looking for beta testers to be able to try out their software, to basically try out the next version of Android 11 for their devices. Um, now, OnePlus did release in basically developer preview for, and of course, the early release of Oxygen OS 11, as I did the demo for you guys running on the video, and we'll give you guys a link to that in the description below. But I haven't heard any word yet as far as a beta program is available from them yet. And lastly, what we have here is the Pixel 4 XL that's going to be running the full version of Android 11 since it was announced. So general consensus is uh, beta programs are going to be starting, uh, basically looking for beta testers as starting, as well as, of course, what we have here with OnePlus is that they started with the developer preview 4, which was the last update that I received on Android, uh, basically running Oxygen OS 11. So the new optimizations that we've seen. Um, all of this information, of course, will be linked in the description below to the article and, of course, a link to that video that I did on my OnePlus 8 running Oxygen OS 11 in uh, that version of it with the developer preview 4. So what I have in front of us here is the Pixel 4a. And, of course, it'll be one of the first devices to receive the Android 11 update as this is a Pixel device. So great camera performance, $350 uh, price point, And of course, I'll give you guys a link to that in the description below in case you'd want to know more about it. So we're going to cover today a lot of the visual stuff that we normally see with Android 11 that are always going to be basically uh, interesting to see if what company will actually bring this over. So first and foremost is the new power button. You notice that the power button is actually very different. Uh, we actually have the emergency contact number here, power off, of course, as well as restart that's present all the way on the top. Google Pay Cards is actually integrated now into the UI as a middle part. And of course, we have the Google Home and the automation toggles that are present on the bottom. One of the really cool things about it is that we actually can control what's in here and what shows up based on what we're using. And the nice thing about it is all you have to do is install the Google Home application, log into it with your account on your device. And once you do that, you'll be able to actually configure and customize all of the different controls that we have here. Uh, first and foremost, of course, you can have any toggle that you have. And of course, uh, configure it to your liking. But the beautiful part about it is it's available with the easy part of basically just pressing it and holding on the power button to activate it and it works great. So that's number one for me on the list. It's going to be basically this the new power menu. And of course, second thing on the list is going to be the new bubble configuration. Now, in the past, we've seen Android, basically Facebook Messenger being one of the only applications supported. Right now, Google Messages is also supported. And the best way to do it is that you just have to turn it on. And once you get a notification from the application, and of course, you customize and prioritize the actual sender. So I prioritize myself as a priority in, in the notification panel. What we'll notice there essentially is the ability for me to not only interact with the actual message, but also be able to dock it, move it. And it actually will work with more applications as we get these things turned on from developers. So. The cool thing about it is this is native built in now to Android and hopefully we'll be able to see it coming into other devices from different companies. But the main benefit that we're going to jump into here, of course, is the ability of talking about our aggregate notifications. So that's the next thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about. So first we talked about the power button, the notification bubbles, nice, really nice feature. And of course, now we have actually categorized notifications. So you notice right here we have conversations. I was talking to my buddy Max, myself sending a test message. Uh, we also have section here for just general notifications. So Facebook, Instagram, um, this is Asphalt 9, and of course, Call of Duty. And last also are going to be the silent ones. So this is Google News, uh, sometimes some of the Twitter ones, and of course, the uh, just the standard weather one. Uh, a lot of these things can also be customized depending on the apps. So it looks like Telegram X is not part of it. And of course, if I go Hangout is also not part of it. Han uh, Android Messages does seem to be part of it. And when I did give myself priority, it did make it into an actual bubble for me. So 
great way and of course it also gives us the ability of basically higher, uh, putting a more priority for it at the top here when it's actually being done that way. Since we kind of covered the power menu, the bubble, and the notification shade, let's talk about the Recents app. So the Recents app actually kind of changed a little bit as well. So what we're noticing here is now that the screenshot button is actually a button that's present here as well as the select option. And what I want to do here is this is Telegram X, the application. I can actually take a screenshot of it. So let's go ahead and click that. And this is the new screenshot option. I can actually share it or directly go into edit and I can also go, you know, customize it to whatever I'd like. And when I'm done, I can actually share it. The really nice thing though is that let's say I want to be able to select things from it. I'll go ahead and hit the select button and it automatically auto highlights the areas for me that I'm able to select as text. So an example, I can actually highlight and press, highlight the word developer and contact and copy it or search for it. So I'll go ahead and hit the search. It'll open up basically Google and give us access to the search for the developer contact. It's very nice and very simple. Now you don't actually have to turn this on, but this does help us know what's available to select. So I can actually just press and hold here. And it'll give me the same selection, but if I press the select option, it just highlights everything on the screen that I'm able to select. Very nice, very simple to use. And again, the screenshot option is present and it is very simple to use. So you could still use the shortcuts with the, fun uh, the actual power and the volume up, but this one actually now becomes much easier, especially if you want to use it directly from the Recents app. And it actually takes a screenshot of the app, not the way that it is right now. So you'll notice right there, the actual screenshot only shows the actual application, doesn't show the notification panel and so on. That one still functions with the buttons. Now, the next thing that's really nice also is the ability of having a native screen recorder. And that's something that we haven't had in Android for a long time. We've had it as a feature that's available with third-party devices like other companies, Huawei, Oppo, of course, and Xiaomi. And now we actually have the ability of using it as a native recorder, recording audio directly from the microphones, and you can select which one it is, show touch screen, and of course, you can customize it and then start recording on your screen. You'll see the notification at the top, three, two, one, and it actually tells you with a vibration on the phone that you are recording. Once you're done, all you have to do is tap on it, give it a second to save, and then it'll be available for you directly within your galleries. And then of course, under screenshots, you can actually see it today. It recorded it as a video. So very nice and very simple, but now we have a native screen recording built in. What we talked about obviously here is a lot of cool visual things, but let's also talk about music and music control because the actual music player is actually did change a little bit. So before we get too far, let me go ahead and open up the notification panel. Notification panel. You'll notice there's a silent notification here, and that's the YouTube uh, music application. So 1 a.m. in Paris by BT, that's a song I was listening to before and I'm actually not able to interact with it because it's not active. So let's go ahead and jump into the YouTube music app. And here it is, the song that was playing before. I am going to lower the volume mostly for copyright issues. Uh, the other speaking of option here, obviously uh, what we have here is transcribing options are also available. Captions are not available in this. I'm also able to configure the new sound menu that's very nice and you're able to jump into the sound settings. But let's go ahead and start the music. The video is going to start, the song's going to start. Live caption is on. I'm actually going to go ahead and disable it. But if you do want to activate it, it's present right there. You'll notice that the new uh, notification option is part of it. So it's actually sitting with the toggles at the top and it is in current form really nice. No longer do we need to go into the developer option to actually activate it. It's very much easy to access. And if you click the phone button option, you're able to select where the music is connected. So I'm able either to connect it to my car if it was an option. I'm also able to turn it on to my Pixel Buds if I did have that in there. Or I can, of course, customize the audio. So switching the, the output source or at the output option for the sound is very simple for the music player. By just selecting it, opening it, of course I can still scrub, like it, pause, do all the stuff that I want to do, but the short, the condensed form still gives me the ability of selecting the audio output. Very nice and very simple. And again, just more into that fluidity and really utilizes the small form factor of this device, but it gives us so much more control and so many more options in here. Now, the other option that they also did add here is before we've had the ability of using pop-up windows. So that's the ability of starting a video and just going home and it actually it goes up as basically a floating window that you're able to use. So I'm able to use the UI, I'm able to go in, open notifications, do whatever I want, and the video stays where it is. And as you can see, we're able to resize it based on just basically holding it from the edge, bringing it up, bringing it in, bringing it up. And it still actually sits there. This is the actual docked form. So it's not the option when I basically select it. If I select it and go full screen, I'm able to jump back into the full window. Otherwise, it stays into basically that nice window option. And again, just basically select it from the corner and make it bigger. Now, the last two options I want to talk to you guys about are actually in the settings tab. And one of them obviously is the ability of setting up certain level of permissions. So we'll go into permission manager and we're going to jump into basically the ability of customizing the different options that what we get with the permission. So let's jump over to the camera application and we're going to look into, let's say, uh, TikTok. I'm able to actually go in there and customize it now that give it give it basically permanent permission. So allow only while using the app. If I want to give it permanent permission, I do need to go into slightly deeper uh, settings options. 
Otherwise, I'm actually able to set it up so that it'll ask me to access the camera every single time I try to turn it on. And that's a new feature of Android 11. So you don't have to give a blanket statement or a blanket permission to use the camera with every time the application is run or even if it's sitting in the background. Now, the last feature I wanna to talk to you guys about is the do not disturb function. So now we have a do not disturb function that we're able to turn on, we're able to schedule it obviously on and off, but also the ability of giving people priority so that they can actually get through the do not disturb function if we need to. So we can customize the people that can get through with the apps that are still allowed to give us notification as far as, of course, as far as alarms and other interruptions that are allowed. And under the advanced, you're able to check basically the duration of the quick settings and display uh, options for hidden notifications. So all of these features will be available as part of Android 11 as far as it comes to Pixel devices. How does it translate to the actual devices that we see from other OEMs will differ basically on the OEM that we're looking at. So Oppo's version, obviously with ColorOS, they're gonna have their own optimizations. Huawei will have that with their own optimization with EMUI. Of course, Xiaomi will have their own optimizations. Of course, the really new, new feature that we've been waiting for from OnePlus as far as it comes to their devices with Oxygen OS 11, and that's the ability of having an always on display. Again, every company will have their own modifications, but at its core, this is what we should be able to expect from Pixel and of course, Google. So what we saw today essentially is uh, the implementation of Android 11 as Google sees it fit for their Pixel line of devices. Each device that I showed you guys again, the Mi 10, the X2 Pro, the OnePlus 8, the 8 Pro, uh, of course, the Huawei P40 Pro, or even any other device from companies that are gonna be releasing Android 11 will have a certain number of modifications to it. And what I mean by that is they have the ability of either omitting some functions out of what we saw. So maybe let's say the power menu doesn't translate correctly or we may see some additional features added in there as their own customizations again oneplus added the color the basically the always on display back into their system with oxygen os 11 and that's something that again we've been waiting for for a long time and i look forward to seeing some of these optimizations from oppo xiaomi huawei as well as oneplus as we see more development coming in now that android 11 is final it's basically on the OEMs to provide us the updates to our devices. So I would say look forward to some more announcements, some more information. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, as well as on uh, Facebook if you'd like to keep in touch with all of the things that I actually get the chance to post for you guys. And of course, all of the other devices will get a chance to review. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.